Cat TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support Cat TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station. Into the uh, Town and Pownal regular select board meeting, March 10th, 2022, at 7 p.m. Um, call to order. Board member roll call, approval of the agenda, approval of minutes of March 3rd, 2022, uh, special meeting, warrants, excess weight permits, liquor license approval, correspondence, old business, boards and commissions, vacancies. Uh, under <clears throat> um, 10, I'd like to add 10A, I'd like to add work plan. 11 is NEMRIC educational package. 12 is the RFP assessors. 13 is town hall. 14, we're gonna strike the ARPA premium pay. Darcy's gonna give us a presentation. We're gonna have it on our uh, board meeting for the um, next regular board meeting. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, executive session for personnel. Public comment adjourn. So move. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did you want to do the roll call too? Yep, that's what we're gonna do right now. Oh, okay. Board member roll call. Uh Mike Gardner. Harry Percy. Brian Harris. Bob Jarvis. Uh like to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Would that change? You did know that already. <laughs> well, that's what I did already. Okay. <clears throat> um, approval of minutes for <clears throat> March 3rd. Everybody get a chance to read those. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve March 3rd uh, minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Warrants, uh, accounts payable, 311-22, Let's do these separately because there's three separate warrants. Um, one is payroll, one is the town hall, and one is accounts payable. So the first one we'll do is accounts payable, 311 34 moved. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, town Hall, <clears> three twelve twenty two thirty seven thousand two ninety nine eighty seven. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Payroll week ending 3 11 22. There's 3 6 22 in here as well. 10,000 61. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Excess weight permits. <clears throat> um, I'll give you the, there's, looks like there's three here. I'll give them the who, who they are. Uh, Cardinal Logistics Management Corporation. Delco. And Basin Brothers Trucking. All have been approved by Joel. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Liquor license approval, I'll give you, what do we have, two here. Um, Dollar General and Winchester Store. 
So moved. <clears throat> Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Correspondence. Don't let me forget to sign these. Okay. I'm going to slide those over there so yep. I don't get confused here. Correspondence. Um, we have a letter from the Listers office. Uh, let me get to it. From Wendy. There we go. <clears throat> So it's executive assistant, it's to the executive assistant of the select board. We have questionable ownership of two parcels. Dear sirs, in 2017, Lister's office at that time, which was Barb Schlesinger, with help from Forrester Bruce Richardson, added a couple of parcels to the grand list. There's some deed research done at the time, but it didn't produce a valid owner of record. In an added effort to come up with ownership of these parcels, the town clerk has also done research She's even confided in the title researchers for help with this large swatch of property, which is over 80 acres. Which basically, I think that that's a little bit of a misstatement. It's two parcels mm -hmm. of approximately 48 acres per parcel. Okay, so let, let, I want to be clear about that. That's per the maps that we have in the information that's in this letter. <clears throat> They've all advised to contact the town attorney, so the town panel has had parcels 03524, 03524A in our system under Levi Lincoln, deceased care of general delivery since 2017. When I pulled the cards to see what was available in the sleeve, there was an old post-it note on the card with a directive to contact the attorney, reiterating the advice given to Julie. Um, bringing the situation to your attention in an effort to not have this buried again, with the incoming new staff. I hope to have the attorney contacted for further research and hopes to get to a conclusion to this problem. She's enclosed a package of cards, emails, and maps to show the properties in question. Thank you so much for your attention. Pound Lister's office, Wendy Jordan. So I believe what we need to do at this point, everybody's seen all these, um, the information that was provided to us through, through our Lister's office. I believe what we need to do is make a motion to have our attorney research this out and Definitely. move forward with this. I'm going to recommend that Megan be the one so she starts having these conversations instead of me. I'm happy to do it with you, though. No, I was just yeah. looking. I, just thinking. Just to yeah, add, no, add, add that into any motion if you discuss that, if you agree. Make a motion to take uh, Megan contact her town attorney uh, to hopefully clean up or clear up the matter of the deeds on those questions. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion, questions? Um, just a question. Sure. Do we have any other options? Like, uh, I mean, is that something that Numric can look for or VLTC or somebody else that has to be our town attorney? Bob, moment, I don't know. Um, I can answer that most likely. The moment you have a specific problem, the VLCT is not going to really help you. Okay. You know, so it's like now it's like, oh, but you have an attorney and there's a note that you found that said contact the attorney. They're yeah. going to immediately, that flags them uh, for you to talk to the attorney. Okay. So the, it is appropriate that it's the, that it's uh, our town attorney. And, but what we could do is be very clear about like saying, can it tell us anything we can do, please, Bob, you know, not you, Bob, Bob Fisher, Mr. Fisher, right, yeah. anything that we can do, you know, yeah, and I'm pretty sure the listeners have done everything that they could, but this has been going on years. for several years now, like four or so. Before any of us are here. I mean, right? it sounds like Julie and the listeners have attempted. I mean, yeah. I, I think we've probably exhausted yeah. our capabilities mm -hmm. within within our town office to research this out. Right. And and then obviously our attorney's going to give us or should give us the right directive on where to go with the next steps. To, to take care of this. Yeah, there's, there's no question in my mind that Bob Fisher can handle right, it. Right. It's not, it, was a, it was more about, did we have any other options? And it sounds like, no, this is the right step. Right. Yeah. I have a motion on the floor. Any more questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Before I, before I forget, um, and I meant to end, I meant to mention this with the minutes. Um, 
is this format on the website, Tara, the new format that you've done the minutes in, is that on the website now or will be, right? Correct? Yes. Okay, so just, just so our viewers and people who see this and view the website, I, I wanted to bring it up and I apologize. I wanted to bring it up when we were on the minutes. There's a new format for our minutes. Um, so, so when you're viewing our website and looking for minutes from previous meetings, moving forward, this is the new format that you're going to see is it's, what you have right now. It's still saved exactly the same. It's in the same place. That, that's right. So everything, okay. So everything's in the same exact place. Mm -hmm. It's just not the format people that are used to. people are used to. So I just want to get that out there right now. It's a change that. Our, Tara initiated. Yep, yeah, the Tara's initiated and our office personnel, and, and that's that's their job. Yep. So I just wanted to bring that up. I'm sorry, I forgot that. Uh, the other correspondence that we have is is Ellen sent this to us. Um, it wasn't on the agenda for last week. So uh, it's from Ellen, the delinquent tax collector. I'm updating the board on tax sale info. She's put together a list for attorney O'Toole to send 30 day payment notices. The cost of the town from the legal fund of $25 per letter. At this time, she has 37 properties, which includes mobile homes, undeveloped lands, and developed lands. I will be holding two separate sales due to the number of properties. The first round at this time will be 15 parcels. The second round will be started after completion of the first, which may possibly decrease the number of parcels to go to sale. <clears throat> if the property goes to sale, the town will not be charged for the, the fee for the letter. All other fees are collectible from sale. Please pr approve the process if I have spoken with the attorney and he's ready to proceed. Thank you, Ellen. She needs a motion for us to approve the mail. That's right. We have to approve the $25 per letter times 37 properties at this time. I make a motion. I have the total in front of me, so sorry. I make a motion we approve the $25 per letter at a total of 37 letters. 37 letters, yep. Do I hear a second? Second at $925. Thank you, Jamie. <clears throat> Any discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Do <clears throat> uh, we have any old business? I don't think we have any old business. Perfect. Up under board and commissions, I think. So we're going to move on to boards and commissions vacancies. So we're going to uh, our planning commission and our development review board have some vacancies at this time. Terms were up and there were some vacancies anyway. Our planning commission has three open positions. They're three year terms. Our development review board has three open positions, three year terms. I'd like to put out, put those postings out and I'd like to get this done at the next board meeting. Which They're is already posted all over town as well as the website and Facebook. Perfect. <clears throat> They've been po posted for about a month now, right? Yeah, for a while. Okay, perfect. Because I didn't know if we could accept John's letter since he's already sent one in. Well, we'll, we'll, do, it we'll do it all at once. Yeah, yeah. We'll do it all at once. Yep. Two weeks. Right. Two weeks from now, we it's will appoint uh, board members to um, to the Planning Commission and the Development Review Board. I'm also going to do something, and I'm glad we brought this up. Um, as the board chair, I want to reach out to our, once they get their boards in place and they get their, um, they get, their chairs and, and their officers in place. I'm going to ask them um, for a mission statement, I guess, mm -hmm. for what they're, and especially the planning commission. I would like to know, I'd, I'd like this board to know what their mission is for the next year, what they're, what they're planning on doing, what they're looking into, what they're thinking about. Um, you know, and I'd like to ask that for the, um, I'd like to ask that for the meeting after their reorganization. The d development review board is probably going to be a little difficult to get that because they don't know what's coming at them every week or every month or whatever. The planning commission should be able to give us a mission statement for the next year. Some ideas. Some, yeah, some ideas. I mean, I'm going to hold them to it, 
because I don't I don't think that's fair because things change and evolve. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to have an idea. I think this board should have an idea of what they're thinking about for the next year. So would it be ambitions or goals? Uh, goals is fine, Jamie. We can call whatever we want. Agenda for the year, too. For the year. sure. You know, I mean, and like I said, I, I don't think it needs to be written in stone, and I don't think we have to hold them to it. And you know, to the, I just, I just think I'd like. I think this board or any board for that matter should have an idea of what their ideas are for the year. And on the flip side of that, we should be telling them what we expect. And that's so true, Bob. I, I think. I think we can. I yeah, think, the communication should definitely go both ways. That's for sure. Great, well, great DR, point. DRB is quasi judicial, right? So there's not like they're not going to set an agenda, but planning commission for sure. And I want to add in their parks and rec. It's not a statutorily required commission. There's really no limit on how many members can be in there, but there are people can always ask to be appointed to parks and rec. And I would also say that you should extend that, like just write up uh, some goals for the parks and rec too, that they can present to you guys. They've been working really hard. They've actually procured quite a bit of money over the last year for everything. So um, and Brian and Peter are doing a fantastic job. All right, Brian's doing a great job. I literally want to right. Not me, the other Brian. Oh, Brian Pappas, <laughs> yes. And Jennifer, my goodness. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, that's uh, I bet you're giving yourself it, a. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't talk about myself in the third person. That's just. I don't know. That was weird, but. <laughs> then, then that's, that's a great idea. I, yeah. I think we should ask, ask Parks and Rec and include them in this because. Um, they definitely want more buy in from the select board. Well, our, our Parks and Rec committee in my opinion in the last year has um, made a huge difference in town. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that the town and the board should continue their our support um, to the parks and rec. I, I think it's something that we really need. So I would love to include them in this please all the way through. And I apologize to the parks and rec committee for not including them here. I, I you know, it's, it's kind of new. Um, so, any more discussion on the um, commissions or the board? Commissions, Parks and Rec? Perfect, which brings me oh, into- I'm sorry, Mike, before you move on, uh, the letter that came from John, are we gonna hold that or require him to submit a new one? We'll hold it. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't think there's a problem with that. Does anybody have a problem with holding that letter? No, I think that's fine. Okay. If somebody's going to be proactive about it. I mean, it's been posted forever, right? Yeah, and everybody right. knew it was coming up. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the took the right steps. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Did we not add it or did we? Oh, we added it. Okay, good. I missed it. Well, we added it. Okay. Uh, it's 10A. So we're under the work plan. Okay. Um, this is something that um, has been worked out with um, Tara and Megan and Rebecca. So we just div divvied the work um, between Tara and Megan. Um, I also can add into this work plan. I did speak to the representative from um, the VLCT that I remember we're going to have him help us with a, a, a good work plan. He's great. He used to be the town manager of like three different towns. And now he just helps other people get their he was very intrigued by the idea of the way we split up our kind of town administrator role. He thought it was sounds very creative. He can't wait to like get in here and talk to us about it. Um, but this is preliminary just for getting started right now. I really think you shouldn't finalize, finalize their work plans until this guy comes and helps us. But this is preliminary for right now. So we have Tara doing accounts payable, payroll, utility billing, minutes reconciling the bank accounts so that's that second eyes on the books and uh that um cynthia is no longer doing that's one of those nemeric tasks that have been taken away from nemeric agendas onboarding um that's uh whenever we get a new employee um employee benefit management weight permits cash receipts she needs to become a notary it's very good for these uh mm -hmm. guys to have that um zoning notifications that's helping with some zoning stuff. And then supporting grant closeouts. So the more administrative back end of grants and you know voicemails, messages, things like that. This is also, this work plan is precluded on um, you having a discussion and giving her a full-time position. So that needs to happen. Um, she is temporarily in a full-time position, but um, you know, uh, you, that's for you to discuss. Megan has, um, she's going to do support with agendas and minutes, legal research, taking a lot of things that I do, legal research and assistance, public records requests. That'll be one of the last things I probably give over um, 
uh, communications with state entities. Again, a lot of the stuff that I do have, like having conversations like I did with four different people at different state levels today. Um, press communications and press releases. I re the town really needs to start doing more press releases. Um, contracts with external entities, really working on those RFPs and contracts. Um, sitting at the table to help manage select board meetings, making sure you guys are getting the right information, saying the right information, all of that. Uh, signing off on fiscal actions, <clears throat> a double check on APs and payroll, purchasing. Um, front end of grants, seeking and writing grant narratives, research of grants, policy writing, uh, doing presentations, and we're keeping her on DRB and zoning work. <clears throat> so that is, if you guys want to discuss it, if you, if you want to approve it, again, this is just a preliminary to get us going. So everyone's really clear on who's doing what and then we can, you already approved bringing in the guy from VLCT who does the work, the- um, Training. The, it's not training, it's a helping to really organize and oh, under, right. make sure you got all the minutia of all the little tasks and all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, um, really helping them understand the full scope of all the work that needs to be done and seeing if they have any lacks in capacity with that and then helping them identify ways to fill those lacks in capacity and understanding and knowledge. Sorry, I'm sick. So we approved we approved this last, last week, I believe, right? Or was it the couple weeks ago? Couple weeks ago, I think it was uh, the previous board, right? Yeah, yeah. But we didn't we approved it without an amount because we didn't know what we were looking at. Is that it was, correct? I believe it was. I thought I gave an amount, but it was. I think it was four hours. It was four hours total, mm -hmm. um, and I believe they're at like it's these are they're standardly like ninety five dollars rates. You know. I, I just I want to make sure that we're clear. That's all. Well, okay. I talked to him this morning, and I'm gonna. I told him that I would talk to you again tonight, and then I get back to him, and then we'd formalize something. Mm -hmm. So that <clears throat> he brought. I don't think this should happen until we're in the new building. So you have a couple weeks to get settled and, right. you know, you can decide a final at the next meeting. Well, I'd, I'd like to decide it tonight. I, once again, I hate to table things. You can't things. sign something though right now because I don't have it, right? Right, right. Oh, but no, we can but... we can approve up to a certain amount. We can do whatever. Yeah. And that's what I'd like to do because I hate to table. And we can put it off for until we're in the new building so that we can get into a private office where there's no interruptions and get right. it done. Yeah, it's key. Yeah. So <laughs> one one question that I have just so that everyone's clear mm -hmm. is utility billing under Terra that encompasses sewer billing and that kind of stuff, just so people are clear on what that's utility. it. Yeah, that's actually it. It's quarterly sewer billing. It's literally sitting here and folding and putting things in envelopes. And I just want yeah. I just want that clear. I, I you know, I, I just wanted that out there as being being totally clear yeah we're, we aren't sending out light bill i think i think this is great i think it's it's what they're doing appears to be what they're doing right now anyways um and i think having having the vlct come in and finalize a work plan and then we can approve it after that i think this is something that you know i think we should approve a certain amount tonight up to so many hours or whatever to get this done um, I also I also think we should approve Tara as a full time employee, so that we can make this happen. I have a sure. question uh, in regards to the the day to day operations of the town hall. Who is going to be directly responsible for say like office consumables, uh, ordering replenishment, like purchasing? That? Okay, I just wanted I yeah. just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, yeah, purchasing is on the list. That's that's going to come when we get down to the town hall. You beat us. <laughs> no, also, I'm sorry. Great, no, great question, Brad. I do want to say this though that I really, when we sat down to work on this, at least this is my vision of it, and you guys can decide. Sorry, my voice is terrible right now. Um, you guys can decide what you think about. It. But really, my vision for this is that these two women are working as a team. This is a collaborative effort, so they're they're going to be picking up and putting down you know, that instead of that hierarchical, I'm in my box only doing this thing, but everyone has their thing they're generally in charge of, but I can't see these women ever not helping each other out when they're in a crunch or need an extra, you know, uh, set of hands. Getting that a bunch. <laughs> right, exactly. So I'd like a motion to approve VLCT to come in for so many hours do we want to go up to five or up to six hours? Or, or I mean, he said that he could come he, and then he, he would. Four, but 
he said that he could also come and then say, I think they'll need another half day or he'll say they're done, they're good, you know, so. So should we approve him for say up to a full day? And if he needs it, we've approved it. If he doesn't need it, great. I would, I would feel personally, I would feel comfortable with approving up to an eight hour session to um, come in and, and define roles. I th we already have something for him to start with. All right. Okay. That, that our office staff has is comfortable with. So I think he can just build off that. And I, I probably, right. he's probably at a four hour day. I, I would, I wouldn't doubt that, but you know, I, I'd hate to say four hours and he's going to need another hour and a half to finish everything up. And then, then what do we do? Now we go. Yeah, back now he's got to wait for the next board meeting. That's for us right. To approve it. That's right. Exactly. That's why I was. Also, just, you know, just so everyone's clear, because you're spending money, right? So it's not just helping them do a work plan like we just did. It's not just splitting up the work. It's also like, okay, what does this really require, this job? Right. What is all the tiny little hundred micro tasks that need to happen? Where do you keep this file? How do you keep this right. information organized? So right. it's really a comprehensive giving a real big scope of what this is right and, and, and there's things on here we could very well be missing that's there's correct things yeah. that, there's things you guys could be missing that's right when you've created this plan mm -hmm. so it's not yeah it's not just saying okay yes tara your account's payable and pay i don't think that's what it is that's why i say and if they need a little that's right an extra training in a little spot then it's they, he can help align it where it belongs that's my opinion so I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the LCT for whatever uh, hours you get. Uh, um, sorry, I'll make the motion that we approve up to eight hours of VLTC, uh, VLCT's uh, uh, consulting to solidify our uh, work plan. I'll second that. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. All right, I'll contact him tomorrow and we'll get a something officially written up. Uh, now we need to approve Tara into a full-time position, which I think is definitely beneficial for everybody. Are you looking for a motion or is there more information? Um, I don't have any more information at this time. I'm looking for a motion and then we can open up discussion. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve Tara for full-time. Second. Oh, huh? You can add. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? <clears throat> Questions? Yes. I have a question. How many how many hours are we thinking up to 40 hours, Tara? What what are we thinking She's here? She's a 40. The... She's a 40. Okay. I just, you know, I think that's the time to ask that question. Is now. Um, are we going to require overtime to be pre-authorized? Or is that I... leave it as like an as-needed basis? The, the, there's not been much yeah. need for overtime. Like the only when there's a big been a big crunch. If I've been, you know, I don't. I mean, you can if you want, but I'm just letting you know that that's not historically what's been. If we're both full time, okay. I'm only asking. Because I know we've had issues with oh, I know. in the past. That's the only well, reason I'm bringing it up. Oh, great, I know. Great, great question. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. um, you're going to get <laughs> your training now for the next two weeks, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and then we we got a review in what thirty days? The end of the thirty days. I'd like to. I'd like to. <laughs> Brian has a Brian has an extremely valid point. Um. About the overtime. I mean, could we suggest that you know if she has to work overtime, she has to give at least a semi-detailed report as to an, for an explanation as to why. You know, if it's a situation where Megan had vacation time or she was out sick for a couple of days and she had to pick up an extra workload, then I could understand it. As it is right now, we use Clockify. Okay. Um, it's an online system for uh, time tracking. And there is a space there for every, you know, block of time, even if it's a full day or just a couple of hours to give a, a detailed explanation of what we actually. I mean, do. I'm not looking to like a micromanage minute by minute, but you know, it's like, no, I had to put an I extra will, eight hours in because I had to finish payroll. Yeah. I no, would, I, can I suggest something that I would suggest that you always allow up to like two hours without approval? Because for instance, say this meeting goes until 
whatever, or something happens, like, you know, they spill coffee all over the thing that they have to mail or whatever it is, like, you know, and I think, and also I think that they also have been talking about, and this is what Tim used to do, is that when we'd have these extra hours, often they would just take it off the next day, come in two hours late, leave two hours early, you know, so. And I think that, I think that's. Like, give give them some flexibility in overtime is my advice, just from having worked in this office for this long at this point, but don't, obviously not exorbitant amounts of it, you know. With your discretion, we'll check your discretion. If we find you're not using that discretion well, then let you know come back or two. That's my that's my suggestion. How about if we did? Is, and this is a brainstorm as we're mm-hmm. sitting here talking, okay? Because you brought this up. How about if we did uh, up to two hours, and anything over two hours would need notification to the board chair or vice chair yeah. with an explanation doesn't necessarily have to be a detailed explanation at our next a reasonable explanation reason, yeah at our, at our next board meeting like you said you know, the, the, you know we had this mailer all set to go and, and it, it got destroyed whatever whatever and becca had a valid point with like when the meetings run late if the next day they have a full workload and they can't leave early yeah then that's a valid reason why and they, they shouldn't need to have to seek permission right right and situations like that that's fine i have no it's only her that. because she's salary right mm-hmm. oh, okay. so are you comfortable with that a two-hour Okay. freedom so to speak and then and then after that either you know no maybe maybe send a, send an email to all board members and then not just the chair and vice chair and then just notify yeah, just a just notification just not look, not necessarily looking for approval right but but a notification and then she knows that she has to yeah. um and we have it on record because yeah, I'm, I'm not looking to micromanage me neither to the to the minute I'm, i don't want to the whole point of having the staff is we should be able to trust their judgment and i'm okay with that me too i sure. just want to make sure we don't get nailed to like oh tara worked 20 hours of overtime this week what did she do right <laughs> no that's that's a good good point um i don't know if we need that in a motion or if we can just you can just do that we can just do that with her yeah and we'll have that on record so let's let's put it on record as um, Tara has two hours of overtime. Uh, make available. a motion. Just cover your butt. <laughs> Sorry, make true. a motion. Right, true. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I retract. Make a motion. The easiest. I'll make a motion that we approve Tara for up to two hours discretionary overtime, after which she should notify uh, chair or vice chair with an explanation. Uh, I'll second. Any further discussion questions? Uh, just I, I just want to make it clear that doesn't mean that you you get two hours every week of overtime. <laughs> it's as needed yes. uh, yeah. by discretion. Yep. It's uh, up to two hours. It does that. And, and I think we can certainly trust our office staff to do that. So I think I, my statement was more for public consumption. Oh, I know That's it right. was. I know it was, <laughs> <laughs> and so was mine. That's right. <laughs> so absolutely, Bob, and, and mine was as well. <clears throat> Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Um, Nemrick educational package. Tis moi. So, um, I've talked to Sue Senning at the VLCT. I have spoken to our town attorney. I have spoken to Nemrick, the head of all the assessors. And, um, as you know, the town has You're voted. You're jumping ahead. Oh, what am I on? Nemrick? Nemrick first. Nemric. Not Nemrick Assessor. Okay. Not Nemrick Assessor. Okay, the sorry. Educational. Okay, educational package. So yeah. <laughs> this is to train um, Tara and Megan on um, all of our Nemrick accounting systems to give them a full, complete, and comprehensive understanding of all of our electronic accounting that is the one accounting systems this is from cynthia she would come and spend the day with them they would have a comprehensive training she would get them up to the place where they need to be and then everything else any support and questions they have after that is already covered under our tech contract so they can call anytime just for quick fixes and help me understand something quickly but this would be this is invaluable Uh, because it would give both of these women a high level understanding of our accounting systems, which would mean that those are their, your second, second and third eyes on the books. That is all of that. So the training on site would be six hours uh, at $145 for each hour and then three hours travel. So the total 
the total package for training them on the our accounting systems would be a thousand eighty seven fifty. And she says, if you need it on a letterhead, she can send it on a letterhead. But that's the general proposal. That is their standard rate for these kinds of trainings. That was the rate that they gave us when we. Uh, yeah, this has been their rate. Yeah, for everything they do in that. Yep. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, approve the training from Nemeric. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. So now? No. Now no, assessors. No okay. Assessors. Sorry. That's no. also Nemeric. That's also Nemeric. So I got confused. Um, so the town, as you know, the town has voted to eliminate the office of Lister. They are still our Lister for 45 days or until you hire an assessor. We already have an assessor. It's similar to when we eliminated the office of auditor, the elected office of auditor. We already were in contract with uh, an external company for our an annual audit. So we did not have to, that vote did not mean, oh, we have to go back out to bid. Right. So after all this research and talking to all the experts, um, you we are already in contract with Nemeric for assessing services. We are ob obliged in that contract until June 2022. That assessor has been working with our town, knows our books. Um, you can, if you want, put out an RFP right now and, and go against contract and get a new assessor. But honestly, you have one who understand, you know, if you want to use a different assessor from Nemeric under the same contract, you're welcome to request that as well. Um, then what is the general a common practice, it is not a statutory requirement, but the common practice is to hire what is called a lister clerk. And that is the person who is essentially the assistant to the lister. They're the one who comes and sits at the desk in town, um, does the emails, the calls, a lot of the administrative work around it, assisting the lister. And um, the suggestion for that is that it is a part-time position, 20 up to 24 hours a week. And he suggested a higher rate of pay around 20 an hour because it is a skilled position that you will want. It will require understanding, training, all of that. You're no longer having multiple listers to pay. It's just one person. And what that town clerk, that, not town clerk, I'm sorry, that lister clerk position does is it saves you money on the assessor. So the assessor is not doing all those little tasks at $94 an hour. They're doing just the small, they're doing, you know, they're unburdening that. So at one point we thought maybe assessors came with their own assistance that's not what happens um the town is is if you so desired is not required to create the position of lister clerk post it as you would any other job interview for it as you would any other job uh cover letter resume and that person would be under the supervision of the select board and working in tandem with office staff and, uh, and all of their responsibilities would be assisting uh, assisting the uh, assessors and that's it they wouldn't be back up for any other town no or anything no. like that um, and there's plenty to do that's about 25k a year if i'm calculating it right so they wouldn't be available to answer questions if somebody has a question and oh no that's absolutely what they're right, available for right. well that's what i thought no, i mean he's happened, not, and then you said no, no back, that's why I was they're not going to be a backup for like tara to like jump oh, in to cover okay. tariff no it's not office. another office staffer right, right. it's no, but strictly, strictly no yeah we're, we're drawing the line on right. duties nope. uh would this a uh, temporary person or not temporary part-time person be tied to the nemeric contract like no. if we, okay not at all this this temporary person, unless I'm misunderstanding, part time, not temporary. Uh, right. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Part time falls under direct supervision from the select board. Okay. Falls under our. Um, we give them directives on their job tasks. They also fall under disciplinary. Yes. Direct disciplinary from. The select board if something's not going right you can require their hours you can <clears throat> require their presence in the office you can require all kinds of things like that right we we can require them to be in the office to answer questions jamie for <clears throat> um you know people you you have to be here monday wednesday friday from right. 8 to 12. no nope, or whatever we that's what i was hoping i guess yes. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so the reason i was asking if they were tied to the number contract because as becca pointed out we could choose to break contract or when the contract is up, we could put it out for RFP and potentially hire a new, new company. 
Right. And if we did that, would they require us to have a listers clerk or would they be no. supplying their own staff? Well, no, so, no, I don't think we know that, right? It, it depends well, no, on. Well, that's why I was asking if it was tied. Right, 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 right. So, common practice in Vermont in the municipalities now, as, because assessors don't just do municipal work, but the common practice for municipal assessors is that the town hires a lister clerk if there's an assistant for. Otherwise, the assessor comes and does all the work. Wouldn't that depend on who we contracted with? Like Nemric doesn't supply a, so from a clerk. What I heard not only from Nemric was also VLCT that that's just common practice. Now, is there another assessor company that uses their own staff possibly? Or um, an assessor that we could hire as an independent who might not want to, it might be all. Possibly. Reasons. So all of that stuff, I think that, and that was the point I was making. Yes. Right. It's going to depend on who we hire if we don't hire Nemric. Yes. Correct. And right now, the state is kind of pushing us to utilize NEMRIC in municipalities. So that's kind of where I, we are using it for the um, majority here, of the rest Just of so you know that, that NEMRIC is, does specialize in municipal right. work. Um, they have over 20 assessors. So again, yeah. the other thing that I wanted to tell you, and I told you is that, that you can also under, even under the current contract, if you want to have a, like a, clean slate start with a different assessor or something like that you're welcome to do request and they will send a different assessor as well um there's a lot of options in there um very very helpful uh, it was chris at at, at nemrick today that i spoke to and i spoke to cynthia so so uh, yeah my i mean uh, nemrick's always done well by us so far so I, i'm 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 pretty happy with them but it's just a matter of uh knowing what the options are uh -huh. right if you want to are the so your questions are do you want to rfp now do you want to rfp in the summer or do you want to renegotiate in the summer or i mean you know but you can stay because you have a contract so you i can stay uh, yeah my my opinion on that is we, we stay with nemeric until the end of the contract because we have it anyway and it gives us more time to assess uh, to assess nemeric as our as our listers without listers Mm -hmm. um, as our lister without listers. And Bob Fisher said he would, he would, that gives him time to review our policies as well about um, if you can just, if you like about renegotiating versus RFP, things like that. So you have, you have a lot of time then to set up a plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm fine with sticking with Nemrick through the end of our contract then. And I don't think that takes a motion, right? No, just, I, I don't no. think it does. The, uh, to, the requirement is creating the other role. Right. right. The requirement would be for us to, at this time, create that position of a lister clerk. Right. And then, and and then so, getting so it. I have a couple, I have a couple of thoughts on this, actually. Okay. All right. For just, if I could for a minute. <clears throat> so, so I think, I think I, I, I know I agree with everybody on staying with Nemrick through June, because that's where we're contracted through now. Mm -hmm. There's no sense in trying to reinvent the wheel right now. Right. And trying to break contract this close to the end of it and paying the that's contract. right. It's four months, three months, whatever it is. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so my question would be, and this goes back to what Bob was getting at, I think, is if we were to RFP for a new assessor, which I think we probably should, because let's face it, there's there maybe there's somebody out there that's cheaper. And they can do the same job okay so i think doing our due diligence would be to rfp for a new assessor yep i, I think nemrick has done us great but i also think that you know hey our due diligence it doesn't hurt to look at our options doesn't hurt to look at options <clears throat> so i think if we hired a at that point if we brought in company xyz and they brought in an assessor with a clerk agent, lister agent that came with them, or lister clerk. There, that's I get the I finally got the right term. Yeah. If they brought in their lister clerk, then we already have one in place. I I think I think if we I think what we should do is if we're gonna hire a lister clerk at this position mm -hmm. or at this time, I think we should make it a part-time position and possibly a temporary position. Until the contract until the is contract up. is up in June, uh -huh. and then at that point, if we stuck with Nemric, we could stay with our Lister clerk. Uh -huh. You also could you. put an RFP that you're looking for an assessor to work with the Lester clerk. Like that could be what you RFP in the summer as well, if you wanted to do that. You know, 
No, that's true. As, as I read the uh, proposal, but the uh, couple of things I noticed in it. That's a contract for next year. Yeah. That's a proposed the, for next year. It's the proposal. Yeah. Right. It's, right. It's what we would go to RFP if we were going out yes. for an RFP yes. for, right. yes. for an assessor. It's a pretty rough draft. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> and it's a... Uh, 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 it, it says in the opening paragraph, the executive assistant, administrative assistant, and town clerk are available to assist the assessor and answer basic questions from the public. It also says the town will provide, and one of those things is not a lister clerk, but perhaps it should be. Um, we should probably reach out to the town, a town that's doing this, and find out what they so, do for a uh, so lister clerk. Shafter, so I already did that. So, so Shaftesbury is doing that. That's what they're doing right now. They're they're having the exact same situation that we just had. Um, and that's where, so the RFP was written, where did you get the RFP language? Um, Proctor. Okay, so this, right now, if you're doing an RFP now, we would have to rework all of that language. Um, however, if you're doing the RFP in the summer, um, our also our, like, our lawyer would help with all of that language and um, looking at our policies and you would be incorporating the lister clerk, I would go straight to the VLCT for that language personally. Um, and possibly Nemrick. Nemrick said that they can, you know, I don't know. Those are all the different thoughts that are, the RFP is, is there, I thought you, I'm sorry, I thought you were looking at the proposed contract for next year from Nemrick. So that's why I was confused about what you were saying. This is the RFP you're looking at that Megan has pro proposed. Proposed, yes. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's, the rough draft that she's- Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't. I thought he was looking at something else. So that's why I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, and, and it would be good to reach out to Shaftesbury and see how they're handling it. But remember, they're in the same boat we are. If we can find somebody who who did, did it last year and, right. and get the, the benefit of their experience, that would probably be a little better. Sure. How many days out are we from the election? That's something we need to think about, too, because if you do create this position of Lister Clerk and perhaps maybe the temporary version of it, six months, then reevaluation at the end of contract. But if you if you need to look at um, how many days you're to post a job warning, because you will not have a lister 45 days after that, that role does not exist in at 45 days from election. And because of that, that person who's in the role, those people are, will not be able to do anything statutorily. They can't touch anything anymore. We're eight days right now. Eight days. So minus that. So we need time to post, to interview, to to hire so uh, so so the uh, the idea is that we would be hiring somebody temporary with full-time with full-time possibility right depending on what we end up doing oh or, now, i was told that 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 role is always part-time up to 24 hours that's what i was that's what well i think he means permanent. i'm sorry temporary versus permanent oh, oh yes <laughs> moving possibly going to a permanent, okay. yeah. permanent yeah, i got a little confused position. on that myself uh, i thought we were talking a part-time spot yeah. permanent oh, I, it's a great way to do it I just, I just, I'm concerned if we hired somebody on a permanent part-time basis now, and then in June, mind. in June, we go to a whole different company that provides all of that for us, mm -hmm. where we would save money anyway. Right. I, I, you well, know, who, and who knows? You know what? We're going to have to, we're going to have to do things in parallel. I'd say yeah. I, what I would recommend is we go ahead and post for this as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then while we're, while it is posted, uh, see if, what we can find out from somebody who's already done this. Right, I agree. Start doing a lot of research on that. Absolutely, and we'll have time to do it then. Right. So, uh, I'll, I'll call um, Chris from Nemerk. Was great. He said call anytime, so I can talk to him tomorrow or early next week and ask if there's any towns I can get in contact with that they've already done that process with. And I think so. I think with the, at this point we are going to post a position for a lister clerk for up to 20 hours a week. 24. Or 24. And I would suggest the 20 an hour. <clears throat> what do you guys feel on the, on that? I mean, I think we're, I, so far, I think we're in agreement for the Lister clerk posting that position, 24 hours a week, up to 24 hours a week. Now we need to talk about the pay rate. Do we want to do? <clears throat> can we, can we post it as? I'm sorry, go ahead. As a temporary Pay based position. on experience? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that, and then. I mean, where where did the $20 an hour recommendation come from? Was that? From Nemerick, that that's Nemerick? a standard okay. practice for the skill rate of a, of a lister clerk. Okay. The other thing is, um, I, 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 recently we experienced this. Don't just say pay with commensurate with experience. Give a range at least, because it what will happen is, I don't, you know, you'll might get a bunch of applicants that are like, oh yeah, 32 an hour. And, and, and then we're just, 
you know, that's their minimum desire, you know. Right. I would give a range at least. That's 18 to 20. Probably like that. That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. <clears throat> so do we want it worded as um, a temporary position, possibly to a permanent position? Mm -hmm. I, I, I that's my I, feelings, guys. I, I'm, I, I think I, I'm just, you know, I'm just throwing my ideas out there. Yeah, I'm one member. Options open. I'm one member. <laughs> you know, whatever you guys. No, I, I think that's listed as, as as part time with the possibility to going full time, dependent on town needs. Well, permanent, well I think temporary uh, going to permanent, permanent is what we're looking for, not yeah. part time. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for permanent right. in the future. Yeah, potential. So just to make sure everybody is watching is clear. <laughs> this is a part-time position. Yes. Yeah. We're discussing whether or not it is permanent or temporary. Yes, but despite the multiple misbeats, it is a part-time position. <laughs> it will always be part-time. I think we get our terminology screwed up a little bit here and there. Me too. But I think we're all on the same page. Yep. And I would also suggest a process require a cover letter. It's a standard hiring process. Cover letter. Cover letter, resume, yep. right. interview. Applications without will not even be accepted. Right, like they, right. And I think we should have these available next board meeting. The RFPs. The RFPs, yeah. Their 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 applications should be into us by. Um, Being that time is of the essence. Yeah. Do, are we going to have a meeting next week, or are we waiting two weeks? We can, no, let's post it tomorrow, right? And post it tomorrow. We'll we'll be done in two weeks from now. That'll give people a chance to get it a chance to we'll give um, a deadline of twentieth. Whatever the I'd I'd say the Wednesday. Twenty fifth. What's our next board meeting? Uh, next board meeting twenty fourth. So you have a twenty third. Let's do the twenty second because 22nd. that gives us a, it'll give us as board members time to um yeah. look at right. Got so, it. So so you want to put some executives on that maybe before or yeah. after. Well, we'll have to put some executives on that. Actually, an executive for that. For interviews. Right. right. We'd have to do interviews. So if we do our cover letters and applications for the 22nd, which is a Tuesday, yep. we could try to schedule interviews for Wednesday. Is that too quick, you think? Uh, I mean, if we're scheduling them as they come in, instead of waiting and scheduling them all on that day, that shouldn't be a problem. If you want to set up a special executive for that purpose on that Wednesday and just have it ready to go, I think that's. Do fun. we need to, do we need to do that in an executive though? Ex interviews, yes. Yeah, interviews are executives. So. Okay. And then and then we could actually hire on the twenty fourth. Yeah. So that we get we get this taken care of, and they're starting the twenty eighth or and, and they start and, and they done. start that following Monday. Yeah. So I, I I would like to know, and we probably can't. I don't know if we can answer it tonight, but I, I would like to know how this compares uh, budget wise, right? Because uh, from a budget standpoint, we were working with uh, elected. Uh, we were working with up to three appointed assessors, correct, uh, or listers. Um, in this case, we're going to be contracting for. Uh, uh, for a uh, uh, for a lister and hiring uh and hiring a part-time uh but permanent uh clerk mm -hmm. so um uh, you know what is the summation of those two versus what we used to be paying and and we used to also contract with numeric so that gets counted right. as well right. and all of that was in our budget i just want to make sure that we're we're budgeted for everything that we're doing mm -hmm. yep we can look at that tomorrow yeah i think i think megan okay. and tara can probably get that to us tomorrow so that we have that and and bob we can certainly make our decision off that information yep so uh and i would use 25k i think for uh for what a clerk would cost and then we have to add to that what it would cost to to uh, to contract out for it to numeric or whoever the, the, numeric it would be a good the question is the question is how much is budgeted now for the three listers right. because that's what will be transferred to the clerk well, right. uh, uh, because the, the assessor is already doing the assessing, like we already have an assessor. It's similar to what. Well, well hang on. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure that's correct. I think we, we budgeted a certain amount and we didn't use. We would need more time of a of a contracted assessor without the listers. Yeah. 
Did you look at, did you look at, um, I, I'm I not, sent you, it was a breakdown of all of that. I sent it to you an email today. Uh, I haven't had okay. a chance to Let me, email today. I sent a detailed, this is from Nemrick, a detailed work uh, division of what happens now. And, and it's, it's, um, is the question that you, is the question that you'd like answered just to help me put my brain around it so I can find the information you're looking for. I want to compare numbers. Is the numbers. question, not just that, but like assessor, do you think that it's going to take you how much more time are you going to require based on what you're doing now versus moving to this other model? Are you going to be requiring more hours or are you going to remain at the same hours? Is that your question? That's my question. Okay, great. <laughs> Let me. Because we would take that, whatever that delta is, the, the difference between what we do now and what we need to do without, without uh, listers, and then add to that the 25K, which would be the clerk, and then if that comes in or about the same as what we budgeted for three listers, plus mm -hmm. what we're currently doing with Nemric, then it's a wash. Right. Okay. And I'm going to ask that question and, and I'm going to have an answer our, for you, okay? I, I, and I think that's our goal. Yep. yep. Yeah. Is to try to get it, get that wash. What's the match? Yeah, we're just under 25,000. So I need, a, I need a motion to um, hire a lister clerk on a part-time up to 24 hour week turning into possibly a permanent part-time part -time up to 24 hour a week position when the contract is renewed or a new contract comes in at the end of june whatever we decide at the end of june. whatever the board decides at that time i'm going to print this i will make a motion Per what Mike just said. I get it. So I do not butcher it again. <laughs> Any more discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That is all of my stuff. So I'm going to go back there. But um, I'm printing out the detailed work plan that gets split between the assessor and the town. Mm -hmm. The, the lister clerk um, that I had sent to you guys earlier today, just so you can have it on paper in front of you, all right? I think it'll be informative. All right. Moving right along. Town Hall. We're getting through this fairly quick for as much as we're getting done here, guys. Yeah. For sure. Um, I'll try to shut up on the next one. No. No. I, I, think we, I, promise. I, I honestly think this has been extremely productive, so we get a lot done and... We've gotten a lot done, and it's only been an hour, so yeah. we're doing good. Um, moving to the town hall. Um, so I'll open, and then I'm going to turn it over to Megan because she's got some things that I think are extremely important, and she's been working pretty hard on it. So let me get to Eric's. Uh, let me get to Eric's email from today. Bear with me. <clears throat> um, this is uh, this is the latest update tonight at five nineteen. Um, I always, you guys are aware, the state officials were down on Tuesday and gave the town the certificate of occupancy, so we are good to go. Um, so the certificate will be emailed when completed. There's still a couple of things that need to be addressed, but they're going to give us that CO, um, and then we have to we have to do those things. There has to be a, a smoke detector put into the plenum for the hot air system. Just little things, just little things um, that have no effect on the move. Only pertains to the mechanical room. Um, we need to work on the procedure for the keys to the alarm. Should there be a knockbox so the fire department can access, or do they just kick the doors in? Uh, <laughs> right. <clears throat> um, one of the things that we need to discuss is the security alarm, whether we move it from here to that building or get a new one. So do we want to do these one at a time, or do you want to? Uh, I say do them one at a time. Okay. So that's probably, um, I think I think the fire fire department thing is probably an easy. I think that's probably an easy one. We provide, um, 
I think we provide two keys. This is my opinion. I think we provide two keys to um, the town Valley office. and protective. The, the, yes, exactly. One to Pownal Valley, wherever they put it, that's their choice. Yeah. And one to Pownal Fire Protective down by the post office. Um, and I, I think that's what we do. Is that standard down here for the Chiefs I, versus a knockbox? I, I just, I think it makes more sense to me to let them James, decide what they're going to do with James the key. Said he was a key holder. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I also, you know, and I think because of logistics, we give one to each fire department. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my each is likely to respond. Right. Odds are they both would anyway. Well, they're right. both going to respond, I'm sure, initially, but whatever. Right. So that takes care of that. If, if everyone's in favor, of that, I don't think we need to vote on that. I think that's just get it done. Just a standard just operating. Just kind of standard operating. Yep. Uh, the next thing is the security system, the security alarm. Are we going to move this one, or are we going to install a new one? Um, well, in the original proposal, when we voted on the town hall originally, the intention was to use the existing system and reuse it to try to save costs. I don't remember how much it was going to cost, but I remember it being high enough to where it was worth it to just move it over. But the intention was we were also going to turn around and try to sell this building as is. Which brings me to <laughs> that point we need to decide on what we're going to do with this building. After so I guess those pandemic. two questions are going to be tied to each other. If we're going to keep it, we should probably keep the alarm system in here and get a new one. Well, I think, I think what we, at this point, I think we should try to get an idea on what it would cost because I think we're, we have no idea. You know, when we say expensive, my idea of expensive is, you know, I don't uh, remember off the top of my head, but or had a, I don't know, but you know, if it's going to cost us $500 to get a new system put in down there, then I say we put a new system and be done with it. I, and I'm just throwing out numbers. I don't have a clue. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I remember it was in the thousands. Okay. Yeah. I can take a look at the cost of that. And you um, were supposed to have that pre-wired into the doors and stuff. I don't know how that ended up working through the modular company. So, yeah, the doors, I thought at least the doors were supposed to have sensors already exterior, there. Exterior doors were supposed to be pre-wired, but like I say, I don't know. Um, okay, so we'll research that out, the, mm -hmm. the security system. Um, the problem with that is... Get a hold of Woodard. Well, the problem with that is, I guess we'd be operating without a security system in place for... We probably wouldn't have it in place anyway for the move because the move's happening next week. Mm -hmm. Right? So we'd be operating without that, without a security system, no matter what, because we wouldn't be able to approve so or we wouldn't be able to say, okay, you're going to move this one or or the new one, install a new one until after the 24th. But we have a FICA down there already, though, right? Fire alarm? So yeah, yeah, yes. the fire alarm. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we're, we're, we're fire alarmed. We just don't have a security system. Well, I would say reach out to this company that we already have and ask them how much it would cost to move that versus how long it would take and how much would it cost to install a new system and how much, you know, how much and how long. Sounds good. And then we can go from there based on cost and time. Um, Sorry, my pencil went fine. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even threw it at me. <laughs> um, I'm going to let you take the rest of this because the rest of this is you've worked hard on this and um i'm gonna let you right. the rest of the stuff is just it's really uh, weather dependent you know the generator we got a pour pad the plumber you know we have to install the ac condenser later it's just stuff that is all weather dependent in the in the other the rest of the update that eric gave me so the rest of the town hall is now good to be megan's office related yeah yeah she's been working hard on this so some final things um, one of them being blinds for the windows um in the packet i printed out a few of the things that i've shopped around for um i mostly looked at home depot for the blinds and we have the best deal and we already have a, a credit card with them you're looking at the stringless one um they do have those as well but it was, I think they were a couple of dollars more. I tried to go with what was the most economical. Okay. But I could always look into other ones. Well, the only reason why I'm suggesting this 
stringless ones is it's less apt for somebody to and they're, they're ma less maintenance free or maintenance easy. Maintenance, yeah, sounds good. So for a couple of dollars, they, they get mm -hmm. a little more life out of them. Yeah, we don't want to buy so super cheap that one year in the sun and they're falling apart. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. All right. Ikea. Just, <laughs> well, at that point, let's just put a spring rod up and a piece I, of fabric. Speaking from <laughs> one in there, perfect. People will go. Um, the other thing was um, cleaning. Mm -hmm. so it's a much larger building. So we'll definitely need um, a company that is equipped to be able to do all the floors and things one, probably once a week. Yeah. Um, so def well, we can put it, definitely reach out to our person that we have now. And then... Uh, is it the same person we had before, two yeah. years ago? Okay. And, uh, and just let them know because of the size of the building, we're going to put, put it out for bed again. And mm -hmm. more than welcome to bed on it, I would say. Okay, I think that's fair. And I think we should. I think we should put out a RFP mm -hmm. for and post it out there, and bring it back again on the twenty fourth to um, act on. I mean, the building shouldn't get too trashed, and then. No, we want to keep it looking nice. And exactly. Keep it up. And we I want this to last the next hundred years. I think we should in our in that RFP. I think we should give the option to clean the building um nights or weekends yes you know the only concern about nights that i have are um it would have to work around our commissions and RB. boards yep. mm -hmm. okay because um you know planning commissions in there drbs in there park and rec, parks and rec is in there so on and so forth so sometimes there, board of health their 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 schedule would have to be fairly flexible for a cleaner if they were to do it on nights. Um, you know, so weekends, a Saturday would probably be best. Yeah. But Saturday or Sunday. But I, I think the option for nights is there as long as they're flexible on. Yeah. They Depending on how Mondays, are the least. Mondays or Fridays at night. There's pretty much no meetings on Fridays or Mondays. Yeah. Friday. You could probably put that and out. That's, and that's fine. Uh, you know, th that's a great point. You know, I, I just think that, you know, they have to be fairly flexible in that because, you know, if they're going to come in on a Wednesday night and the DRB is going to be in there or whoever, yeah. that's going to be hard to clean and do their job. Good. <clears throat> well, it would be fun to watch them trying to wipe the table down around the people working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moving but the chair. It's a big building. I mean, yeah. people are going to be coming. When they clean, that's going to be many hours. So, yeah, right. Well, the biggest thing is if yeah. they're running a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, you can okay. slide them back out of their chair. As long as the chairs yeah. are on rollers, we're good. They can slide them out of the way, mop the floor, slide them back. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also um, looking for a trash can for Town Green, meaning Center Street Park and Town Hall. Are you talking two separate cans or one can potentially for both? Or, yeah, even one can for both. Okay. Well, my only thought is because they're they're really at two separate heights. That's why I was asking. I was referring to Town Green being like the whole area. Okay. Yeah. In terms of that plan. Um, but either way, definitely need a trash can. Yeah. And then someone to hopefully well, take think, care of that in terms of emptying it. So would that be something we should post also? I I think we should look at that because because we also have a problem consistently with the trash can at Strobridge Park, um, you know, not being emptied over a long term, you know, and not that we have to go with somebody, but I think we should RFP to have a couple of outside animal proof trash receptacles, not not a dumpster, right? but, but a, you know, a 50 gallon trash can or whatever um because because we do have that problem at, at strobridge I, I know there was a tremendous problem with it last year um so i think if we could have have an rfp for those two places you know to to a company to come in and take care of the garbage all right and then see the other one was uh porter potty if it was going to stay there 
Yeah, that's or if that's definitely keep keep that contract. Okay. Um, it's a multi-use depending on the time of year. I mean, how many years before it becomes a perma potty? Perma potty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was actually about to ask: Should we ask if we can get a deal if we reserve it for a year? <laughs> Go rent for ten months, get two months free. Uh, or do you, or do you want to take and ask Darcy what it's going to cost to put a perma potty in, <laughs> and, and, and attach it to the, to the, the wastewater yeah, sewer. Time, sewer. <laughs> oh. Um. Another thing was um, IT. So you're hoping to come up with a plan to make things a little bit simpler, especially when it comes to um, our computers and everything. If we could stray away from you know, clunky desktop computers and stick with laptops. So keeping, we're trying to make sure that everything in the office is digital so we get away from paper and mm -hmm. just generally keep things simpler. Yeah. So guys, we got to look at the our present contract, see when that's going to be up or make, actually we should take and put our eyes on it yeah, so, so we can see mm -hmm. uh, when was the last time we updated all our hardware in here well i said every two That's years they get it, it's been well i remember when we when we first got elected the first time right. they did all a they whole, updated everything that year it was like yes five or seven computers that year. yeah and then COVID happened we had taken get laptops and yep all that kind of stuff so we, we have laptops and we have fairly new workstations right but, uh, but to to make this point I, we're gonna we're gonna need to upgrade. Do we need to move in and see what works and what doesn't first, and then and then decide what we need to upgrade? Well, I think I think where this question came from is is um, right now there's a there's a purchase plan in place, I believe, where Chuck comes in and every couple of years replaces a desktop. You know, and I don't know if that's his idea or. I can so, speak to it. Yeah, I can speak. That's fine. Um, so from what I understand from Chuck, he does every two years, there's a rotation of um, computers. And every every year there's one, every year or two years, there's one or two that he replaces. Mm -hmm. um, and he just does that. I don't, like, he, it's not, he doesn't ask for the approval. I think it's just a plan that was set in place a, a while ago. Um, and you know, think we don't need desktops anymore. We, you know, every, every, we should not be buying any more, in my opinion, we should not be buying any more desktops. I think a laptop for everyone with a docking station, if yep. someone wants a monitor at their, at their desk, you know, like sh you may not even want a monitor if you're a laptop person, right? So um, I think you can, because that way people, you know, can well, take their, take it home with them too. And there's all, there's often been a lot of like, well, I can't, my computer's at work. And well, I know that, Speaking from experience, it was nice to have a larger monitor um, when I had the docking station. Yeah, and I mean, some people. When I, when, I was, when, you, when I was, and right. I mean, you just snap the laptop and you got your other right, key, and you get a bigger wireless screen. keyboard, and it's just it was a lot more user friendly. I think um, what the recommendation, what the, what the idea is, just from having worked with the IT as it is now, is an idea that maybe we should reassess our tech services yep. and reassess if they are keeping us up to date, if they're efficient, if if things are being done in an efficient way. Um, are there tech activities that can be given to Tara and to Megan? And I believe the answer to that is very much yes. You know, I you know, we're paying someone an hourly rate to to put an email on a phone when Tara could put the email on your phone for you. You know, there's mm -hmm. There's, I just think it's war, It's time for a reassessment. That's all. I'm not making a statement one way or another about our tech person. That's just, it's time for a reassessment because mm -hmm. things have really changed, especially since the pandemic in how we work electronically. Well, that's where like I'm going because of COVID. Yeah. If we had to shut down again, you pick up your laptop and you can and work, you know. From and it may happen thing. again. I mean, right. no, that's. Right. I think it's, I think it's just time to, I, I think it's time to research and, possibly update our IT system and and how we approach it. I think so. But I the whole reassessment is is uh is is absolutely required because in, in addition to that, in addition to you know things getting newer and, and newer equipment, they're also more user friendly. They're right. more um uh, self service. 
you buy it and install it. And some of our some of our staff might even need two monitors. Well, that's what I was thinking, especially yeah. with when you're doing payroll and yeah, yep, uh, yep, yep. Depending on what the what the two monitors yeah. is almost standard for office staff at yes. this point. Right. But no more desktops because I right. uh, in some well, ways no docking stations monitors because, right. because right. there is like like I think there's a schedule to get a new desktop like you should make sure he's not about to get one is what I'm saying. Right. You know? so, yeah. I'll bring up that contract. And, yeah. Well, and I think somebody should call Chuck tomorrow and say reach out, reach out to him tomorrow and say hold off on anything because we're Any gonna for theirs. we're he's, gonna um, reassess our IT. Yep. Not that we're unhappy because that's not the case. I just think that uh, I've been here for this is going on my third year and we've never reassessed in the two that I've been here our IT stuff. And I don't know the last time that it was reassessed or when the contract was signed. You can let them know we're looking, at, um, looking into more laptop and that type of let them mm -hmm. know the direction we're looking. Give them the plan. Yeah. You know, okay. and right. you guys are already cloud based, right? Yes. I mean, and shared drive and all that good yep. stuff. So, I mean, that's a big plus. So uh, I think the, the the key there is to make sure that we're not about to purchase something that's obsolete. Correct. And the second thing is uh, is as we do this, we should probably do it as much as we can if it's feasible on the current contract. So when when the workstation's right. up, let's make sure we get the right stuff as we're replacing it, rather than going this huge expense of of replacing everything today. Right. right. Exactly. And, and I think that's where I think that's where Megan and and Tara were headed with this yep. whole whole thing. With the reassessment. That's what I got. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. And then the other thing was um, furniture for the new office. There are some things in here that we're going to be moving over, um, but there are still some items that we'll need. And we we're hoping that maybe we could use ARPA money for that. I know you already approved um, using some for the. Um, Overall costs of the time now, but we need approval for the furniture. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Do you specifically have items, yeah, or is it just kind of in general you're thinking? Um, Do you have a list general, that you want to replace? Um, we we have part of a list, but I think that, that a couple of people in the office are still deciding whether you know which, which desks they they want and things like that in terms of the ones that we ha that we have. Okay. Um, I think having a list would definitely help us decide how we want to proceed funding wise. Can we talk about this? Well, I see the mailbox and I see yeah. a lockbox. So but that's that's all there is. When we talked about this zip line, we talked about it as uh, try to get by with as much of, of what we have here. Right. Move in, and then once we move in, we'll know we'll know better what we need right and, you know, I, I mean that we, and i don't mean forever it'll take a week or two to to know what what's really yeah. missing right mm -hmm. I, um, I, I don't want to buy stuff and find out we don't need it exactly right i think one thing that we have to be careful of um is moving like our our soft furniture the chairs um and that kind of stuff what? um anything that's wood, wood or cloth because, because of the I like because of the mold potential mold issue yeah we had. Had, we we had talked about that initially early on that pretty much anything soft or wood was an automatic no-go but stuff you could wipe down with bleach wipes was I, you know okay. i think i think that's totally fine as it is we're going to end up with you know paper goods that need to be moved that can't be wiped down. <laughs> so mm -hmm. You know, I, I, and I think so. I think we have to be careful with that. But I think as far as, you know, a lot of the metal desks, the newer stuff style, um, such as what Megan's using now in her workspace, um, you know, I, I don't think she's going to require that large of a, of a piece. But Ellen has said that she could use that yeah. in her workspace. So they've already kind of worked out a little bit of a plan amongst the office staff. Okay. Which is which is to Bob's point. Let's get it over there. See see what's working and what's not going to work, and then go from there. Yeah. Um. So I think at the next board meeting, if we had a detailed list of what we need, okay. Then I think we could just say, go ahead and let's get what we need to get. All right. Sounds good. I, I mean, I think that, is that the approach that we want to take? Is everybody Safe. comfortable with that? I think that's the best approach. That like we said, that we we're not buying stuff we don't need. Mm -hmm. Correct. 
that brings me to my next point about um, if we should announce that we are moving next week. Um, I mean, obviously on Monday, we're definitely going to be working and doing all the day-to-day things, but Tuesday, <laughs> the movers will be here and they're moving things in. So and we want to announce that um, the temporary uh, pause on office duties, unless it's an emergency. I would say by appointment only. Yeah, I, I would say, I would say, that way. I don't, I don't want to speak for Julie because, because, uh, you know, obviously we can't, but I would think for our staff that I would say Monday, we're open for business. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday would be by appointment only next week. And I think we should post that on our website because who knows how long it's going to take our staff to get over there and get set up, but Tuesday through Friday. And if, if we get everything done by Thursday and they're comfortable or Wednesday, then they can post repost on the website. We're open for business as normal. Okay. Is that, is that fair for you guys? Were you saying yeah. Tuesday or Monday? Because Monday, yeah. everyone's going to be packing. Like, there's going to be. Yeah. Well, Monday. May as well be. Well, then, then we can say all of next week. I would, that's, I, what, that, that's, that, that's If that's what you guys want, that, and, you know. That, Julie's closing. And, and then, yeah, I was going to say, uh, I could speak for Julie. She said earlier that no matter what, next week she's closed. Then. then As town clerk, she can do that. Yeah. She sets her own hours. Uh-huh. And so the town office, town offices. Um, will be by appointment only um, the week of whatever Monday is. What is it? The 14th. 14th. Yep. The week of March 14th, all business conducted in the town office will be by appointment only. And let's post that on the website. If we can get it up tonight would be great. But if not, tomorrow will be fine. No, I, I didn't look at I'm just. I'm sure, Terry, sure, we'll do that. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> So on a, on a lighter note regarding the new town hall, I've had a lot of people ask me if we're going to plan like an open house to let the public come in and kind of well, I have that on. new digs. That's fine. I had it on my list, but a ribbon cutting. And that's well, I wasn't going to go too pompous about no, it. No, but that's kind of where I open I had house. a grand opening open house. You know, type of, you know whether we we're going to do a date. Um, you know whether we were going to dedicate it. However, and I I think we should. Um, I, I want to throw this out there. I want to throw, uh, I, I want to open this up for discussion. Whether we do a grand opening, whether we do a ribbon cutting, whether we do whatever we, whatever we want to call it. I think we should wait for a full board to make that decision because Angie was the chair when we started this project. Um, well, I mean, when we made the groundbreaking, you you right. know, the, there was previous boards that started this whole thing. I shouldn't say started it. Uh, when we when we put this project to fruition, um, Angie was the board chair, so I I think we owe it to her to um, wait until the twenty fourth to make this decision. But I think we should definitely throw the idea around on what we do. Right, and uh, I, I agree. Uh, but uh, another thing we need to think about is if we did it in the summer, we would have more people attending. And if we did it in the summer, it might be after we move the schoolhouse, we'd have a lot more to show. And right. That's and that's why a lot of people voted for it. Right. Exactly. So I I just think it's food for thought. Yep. But I don't I don't feel comfortable making a decision on this tonight without her here because she was the board chair when this whole thing really kind of. Took, you can't anyway, to place. Enough. Well, it, well, it's a, yeah, it is. Well, town hall's on. Town hall. about, right. Yeah. Okay. Open house though is that's true. That's true. <laughs> we, you know, it's on. It's on there under town hall, so it's all related. Also, but maybe give the Angela public a chance it, to say, "Hey, we'd like to see this kind pit. of eventer." And we yeah. dedicated to this person. This is someone I really love. That <laughs> that's I a, up, you know. That's a really good. That's really good input. Uh, so we get get input from the town. So why don't we do that? Why don't we put on our website and for all of the viewers tonight? Um. Let's get a suggestion box going. Does that sound okay? Mm-hmm. Everybody? Um, we'll get, you know, we'll get a little suggestion box going and, you know, go from there. I just think we owe it to Angie for sure, though. No, I think that's part that's more that. than fair. Wait for, you know. Yep. yep. Um, the only other thing that I had on there, I think we covered everything aside from um, office supplies. We've been ordering our office supplies from Staples for many years. 
And some items are just very expensive, like yeah. paper towels and things like that, which would be so much cheaper at any other place. Well, do we, can, do we have a contract with them or it's just been standard practice? I think it's just been standard practice. Okay. So I guess we can reach out to direct supply and... There's a bunch of them, WB yeah. Mason, yeah. you know, they all deliver. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but it's also, uh, I, I think you're also saying that maybe we should divide this up into uh, certain types of consumables versus <laughs> office supplies, because paper towels, yeah. you can get mm -hmm. at the supermarket or, or right. yeah, know, somewhere else might be cheaper, and maybe yeah. there's a list of stuff that, that isn't appropriate for office supplies, and we could save a lot of money. I think that's what yes. you're saying. Yeah, absolutely, yep. Yeah. Get that list together. I mean, and I don't know. I I know that all these places that we mentioned um, are part of state contract, and we can piggyback on them. You can look and see what the price range is if it's worth doing that, or we can go. I bet you that's not. I bet you that's never been done. I'm just. You're right, though. I will bet that's never been done. So not as long as I've been here. Not that I remember. So it. just to let you, I'm yeah. just putting it out there. That's right. right. Save top, save five dollars on a ream of paper. You save five dollars on a ream of paper if we went with the state contract. I I, yep. I mean, no, well, that's a great idea, Jamie. Oh. All right. How about this part set? And so the last thing is <laughs> you got you got yours. All the signs, well, as you know, those most of them are the signs that are on this building, mm -hmm. and Joel said he would move those. <laughs> but there is also the bigger one that's for the side of the building. Since we have such a uh, larger biz or um, town hall, there is space for it. Um, this is the same person that created the signs that are above that one. And so Joel is wondering if you want to go ahead with that or. Are you talking in the side facing the road for the side yes. of the. Okay. For the 32 by <clears throat> 32? Yeah, the, the large sign. Have it mounted on the back side of the building? Mm hmm. Hmm. What's the price of that, though? <laughs> that I was not provided. <laughs> I actually have no idea how much the ones are that we have now, to either. Um, I would say we need to find out price before we vote on whether or not we're going to. I don't want to just cut a blank check right. for signs. Yep. Fair enough. Well, sure. Yeah, I, I think I, send that over. I think that, you know, I think Lucy's going to, you know, I think Certainly she's going to treat us pretty well, and I'm sure. And, you know, um, everything's going to match. And it's one of the things that um, I've really strived for on the whole project through all this is to try to keep as many local people involved. ties involved, in, you know. And I know what you're saying. I totally understand that. Well, no, no, it, uh, I just thought of something Parks and Rec had talked about. So you can finish your thought then. I just think, had you know, an idea. Trying, trying to keep, just trying to keep our, um, local contractors involved in that building so far mm -hmm. has really worked to our benefit. Uh, it, it, the, the quality of workmanship, because we kept it local, I think has been extraordinarily high because we kept all of our residents or former residents or people with a vested interest or whatever yep. involved in this whole entire project. So <laughs> that's, that's it. My only thoughts on that. And I think we should get a prize. So, uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I get you great. Uh, so parks and rec has this <laughs> time, uh, the big blank wall that's going to face the road and the suggestion was put forward and we were waiting until after the election and I'm probably Jen, I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of turn on this. Uh, the idea of, I think it was Peter suggested putting like an information projection board or some kind of projector to project town information on that wall, whether like how we have the marquee out there in front of the firehouse for voting day, like that kind of stuff, but projecting it onto that road facing wall somehow. I don't know what the cost would be. I don't know what the logistics would be. It was just an idea that was put forward to yeah. try to utilize that giant blank space. Oh, I, I, I'm not. There's going to be a bigger blank space coming this summer. <laughs> yes, oh. when we move the schoolhouse. Yes. So. Yeah, but that's on the other side. I'm just saying, though. It's, yeah. It's all. Or do we project movies up against there? There you go. <laughs> well, that idea might have been suggested, too. <laughs> 
Maybe not on the wall, but for uses for the town green. If you want, I could look into the price of the sign as well as the projection. Well, the sign I'm sure is gonna be way cheaper than the projector. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it was just an idea that was put forward by, yeah, by Parks and Rec. Because they were also thinking that, you know, you could do like a, a rolling series of like dedicate, you know, yeah. you know how like some towns I do like the citizens that have served and died in wars, they'll hang their information up on the street signs, Town doing wall. something like that, but like scrolling like, you know. Yeah. yeah. I don't really think it would be that expensive. I know personally, I actually have a projector in my living room instead of a TV and it costs $200. With this, uh, you know, yeah. separately. Aren't they, they're really not. D d I, an I, idea. I, no, it's an idea. Let's look into it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good idea. Might have a dual purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. We could use it to warn stuff. Could broadcast this oh, oh, see. Live <laughs> 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 <Don't lie, laughs> feed it. <laughs> In Christmas time, we can light our tree. Oh, so. there you go. Uh, don't get me started on that right now. <laughs> that's that's another day. Well, part of the town hall, should we plant a new tree? Christmas tree. Let's wait for Angie on this one. Holiday tree. Holiday. I, I, I don't want to get into that because we don't have it on the agenda. And I think we need to put it on the agenda at some point. But that big tree needs to come down. It's a, a disease tree. Yeah, that's been been getting set for a few years now. It needs to come down, and we need to do something. And I actually have a plan in place, but let's um. Well, let's put it on the agenda for. Put it on the agenda for the twenty fourth. I don't. We get a lot on the agenda for the twenty fourth already, don't we? Do you, we want to run a special meeting in between then? No. Uh, let's oh, let's put the so let's put the tree on the following week or the the following meeting. Just we can put it out there. It's not something that has to be done. No. Right now, let's put it on that first meeting in April, please, Tara. Yep. We don't want to play with the lights until it warms up. So, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because we need to take care of that as a board this year and, and be done with it. Preferably before the new the building gets moved over. Yeah. yeah. Are you done? All done. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. Do anybody have any questions on the town hall or um, comments? Our next board meeting is probably going to be in the new building. Possibly. Should Very be. nice. It should be. I'm excited about that. Or you'll still be sitting in this because it hasn't moved yet. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> like, it will be one or the other. If our IT guy if our IT guy gets things going and we get over there, then, then well, we should we be. We can't move this. This is a. Right. But still. Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, so. I'd like to make a motion that we move to enter executive session to consider evaluation and possible discipline of a town employee and invite Rebecca Dragon to join the session. Second. With possible action. Oh yes, with possible action afterward. <laughs> Is there a second? Yeah, I second it. Oh, I didn't hear you, sorry, Jamie. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. All right. Entering. Recording stopped. Executive session. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Round of executive session. Like a motion. Uh, uh, I make a move. Uh, I move that we issue a rep, uh, written reprimand to a town employee and to authorize the board liaison to issue it on the board's behalf. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, I'd like to open it up for public comment. Um, you guys want me to keep time or I can? Give me a minute. It's not very many people out there. So. No, and. and you know, I'd still like to limit it to three minutes if we could. I think it's good to keep with that. Oh, anybody who wants to raise your hand, go ahead. Or take yourself off mute and talk. No one with their hand raised yet. No one with their hand raised, Sarah? Uh, nope. I motion uh, to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody, for attending. 
CAC TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support CAC TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station.